Today we are going to go for an analysis of a very thoughtful poem, Hamathraya, written by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Hamathraya is a combination of two Sanskrit words. One is he and another is Maitreya. In Sanskrit, he is an interjection and that is used while a person calls someone by his or her name. It is the same as the English expression, Oh Maitreya. From the title of the poem, one gets a hint that this poem deals with someone named Maitreya. Emerson was fascinated with the Hindu scriptures and mostly the sacred Vedas. The poem Hamadreya is based on the passage of Vishnu Purana. The title of the poem is a shortened form of Hail Maitreya. Here the poet records what the sage named Parshara taught his disciple Maitreya in response to the disciple's query regarding the real worth of earthly possessions. The poet talks about the earth song along with the story of a few landowners to clarify what the sage told his disciple about the real meaning of life. There are three sections in the poem. The first section, the poet talks about some men, namely Balkili, Han, Tubiliard, Osma, Miriam and Flint, who are boastful about the wealth and well-being, but they are unaware of their mortality. In the second section, the earth song, the poet shares what the earth thinks about those men. Earth is rather in a sarcastic mode about their foolishness. In the last section, the poet Persona shares his reaction after hearing the story of those men and songs of the earth. In the last stanza, the poet presents his realization. The first part of the poem, the first stanza, Balkili Hunt, Williard, Hosma, Miriam Flint, possess the land which rendered to, rendered to their toil hay, corn, roots, hemp, flax, apple, wool, wool and woods. Each of these landlords walk amidst his form, saying, It's my names. How sweet the west wind sounds in my own trees. How gracefully climb those shadows on my hill. I fancy these pure waters and flags know me, as does my dog we sympathize. And I affirm my action smack of soil. The first stanza here, the speaker of the poem refers to few people, a farmer's Bulkley, Hunt, Williard, Miriam, and so on, who possessed lands rent to their toil. Those men produced hay, corn, roots, and the products what they have produced. Each of these landlords while walking amidst their forms, express their authority. They were very proud. They were the owners of their lands. One of them said by referring to his land, that the land belonged to him and his children. Thereafter, he referred to the west wind and told the speaker to hear the sound the west wind made in trees. Ironically, those were not his trees. Those belonged to nature. However, he felt pleased to see the shadows on his hill. It seemed to him that the shadows gracefully wandered on the hill. He fancied the pure waters and the flags. He, his property to him was like a dog to his master. Faithful and submissive in reality, it was just the opposite. At last, the speaker said in a confident to tone that his actions smack of the soil. It is a reference to the person's deep relationship with his property. Second stanza. Where are these men asleep beneath their crowns and strangers pond as they, their furrows plough? Earth laughs in flowers to see her boastful boys. Earth proud, proud of the earth which is not theirs, who steer the plough but cannot steer their feet clear of the grain. So in the second stanza, the speaker asks, where are those men, those who are very proud about their property? Once they said they own the land, but now they are beneath the grounds. Strangers like them plowed their furrows, a metaphorical reference to their graves to bury them. 
Thereafter, the poet presses the perspective of the earth. According to him, earth loves at the boastful attitude of her earth proud boys. They were once proud of the earth, which is not theirs now. It was as free then as it is now. It is not much different that can be seen on earth. The only difference is those men are no more. The poet ironically says human beings can steer their plow, but they cannot steer their feet clear of their grave. In this way, the poet introduces the theme of mortality. Next stanza. They added rich to the valley, brook to pond, and sight for all that bounded their domain. This suits me for a pasture, that's my park. We must have clay, lime, gravel, granite ledge, and misty lowland where to go for peat. The land is well, lies fairly to the south. It's good when you have crossed the sea and back to find the sit fast acres where you left them. Ah, the hot owner sees not death, who adds him to his land. A lump of mold the more, hear what the earth say. In this particular stanza, the poet says that humans created the rich to the valley, brook to the pond, and thought to redesign nature for the sake of their inner pleasure, for their own comfortability. They redesigned their nature. Whatsoever, they spent the most of their lives thinking about useless matters, such as which part of the land best suited for a pasture or a park, where they could find a clay, where they could find a lime, where they could find a granite ledge and misty lowland, where they could go for peat. Moreover, they desired to own the lands which were well maintained and faced a specific direction. One of them said, it is good when you have crossed the sea and back to find the sit fast acres where you left them. The last few lines of this section of this particular part throw light on the possessive nature of human mankind. Again, the poet says the hot owner cannot see death. Death adds him to land like a lump of mold. Here the poet uses a metaphor in the hot owner. This phrase refers to the greedy men. The poet makes a comparison between those men and lump of mold. It is true that when human beings die, they turn into a mere lump of mold. Absolutely true. However, in the last line, the poet tells the readers to listen to what the earth says about those people. Earth song. Mine and yours, mine not yours, earth and yours. Star Stars of white shine down in the old sea. Old are the shores, but where are old men? I who have seen much, such have I never seen. So in the first part of this earth song, the earth says that everyone belongs to her. It is the foolishness of humans to believe the land or the earth. In reality, they belong to Mother Earth. Earth endures and stars abide her plan. They shine down in the old sea. The shores of the sea are also old, but the old men are no more. Lastly, the earth ironically says she has seen much but she has never seen such foolishness of men. The lawyer's deed ran sure in tail to them and to their heads, who shall succeed without fail forevermore. In this section, the poetic person of the earth says those landlords had the lawyer's deeds to transfer their possession to the next generation. Apart from that, they link by documenting how much they had, they are securing the rights of their future generation. However, this statement also reveals the stupidity. As they are ignorant kind of man, men, they think a mere deed or will could give them the right to own the land as long as they can. Here is the land, shaggy with the wood, with its old valley. 
mountain flood, but the heritors fled like the flood's foe. The lawyers and laws and the kingdom clean swept here from. In this particular stanza, Hamathraya similarly talks about those men. The earth points at the land, shaggy with wood, the old valley, mound and flood are there, but the heritors could not. In the following line, the poet uses a simile, compares the death to the flood's foam. Here he compares death to the flood's foam. In this particular line, he uses a simile. The earth refers to the lawyer, the laws and the kingdom, which will be swept from the earth. As men are mortal, their possessions are also swept away after their death. One cannot carry one's property after their death in heaven. They called me theirs. Why so controlled me at everyone? Wish to say, stay and is gone. Who am I theirs? How am I theirs? Sorry, if they cannot hold me, but I hold them. The earth says that they called her theirs and controlled her. Every one of them wished to stay on earth as long as they could. They wanted to stay alive, alive not for the love or either nature or earth. Greed and lust controlled their thinking pattern. But at last they are gone. Thereafter, the earth asks how she can be theirs if they cannot hold her. Moreover, the earth says she holds them. So it is mere foolishness to think about how much one can acquire. At the end of the day, everything belongs to Mother Nature and she is the sole owner of the lands about which those men boasted. When I heard the earth song, I was no longer brave. Last part of the poem, Hamatreya, my ivory is cooled like lust in the chill of the grave. The last ones of the poem, Hamatraya, the speaker of the poem says, when he heard the song, he was no longer brave. His average school, like lust in the chill of brave. In this way, the poet highlights that humans being mortal cannot possess anything forever. They are the tenants of Mother Nature. She allows them to own a mega part of her property and men, after acquiring it, boast about that. However, at the end of the poem, Emerson highlights the importance of spirituality. Materialistic life leaves the person with a temporary illusion. At last, it robs the person of his burial robes. Thank you.